Welcome to Dad Splaining, a weekly chronicle of all the weirdest, messiest, grossest, and funniest parts of fatherhood hosted by two first time dads. I'm Jesse. And I'm Brandon. So today is Monday, May 7th, 2018. You are listening to episode two of Dad Splaining. Last week we recorded the pilot episode and uh, you heard a little bit about the pregnancy phase and the psychological and emotional changes that we go through uh, from becoming men uh, or boys into becoming dads and uh, and all the fun stuff that goes along with that. Today we're going to talk about something else that no one ever really tells you ahead of time, which is when you have a baby, you can kiss a healthy sleep schedule goodbye. Am I right, Brandon? Absolutely. We're going to be talking a lot about sleep schedules, sleep deprivation, uh, and just generally what you should be doing when you're not otherwise getting sleep. So as we you know, kindly referred to here, this is the part where you're going to enter the zombie mode, where you're just mm-hmm. never going to be asleep, you're always going to be tired, you're going to have to be awake almost all of the day. So we're going to delve into all of the unpleasantness and share some of the funny things that end up happening that you kind of have to laugh at, otherwise it's not really worth it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this out of the way. If you haven't had your kid yet, here's a bombshell. Accept it, get used to it. If you're used to sleeping eight hours a night, that's not going to happen for a long time. You are going to sleep about two hours and wake up, and then you're going to go back to sleep for two hours and wake up, and you are going to repeat as necessary. That may come as a shock to you. That may have never happened. You may have thought, you can't survive on that amount of sleep. You'll die, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Not true. You will live. You will survive. It will suck for a while, but your body will adapt, I'm telling you. Yeah, it's the most severe kind of hardship that most people have probably been through. Uh, You know, when you don't get a lot of sleep, a lot of weird, interesting things happen. Mm -hmm. uh, And you don't think that you can do it, but luckily we're here to tell you that you can do it. Absolutely. You can make it through. It's going to suck a little bit, but just remember it's it's for the kid. Mm -hmm. It's for the kids. Exactly. (laughs) And, you know, I mean, everyone's got a different sleep schedule to start off with. I, uh... One thing that kind of gave me the advantage when I became a dad and we entered into that really weird intermittent sleep schedule where you really weren't getting more than four to six hours a night is that I kind of had that uh, as a previous experience. Um, So Brandon and I have been friends for about, what do you think, seven years now, somewhere around there? Somewhere in there, yeah. And uh, for about a year and a half in that, I worked a really rough job. Just the worst. Yeah, yeah, it was (laughs) a mess. And I would, as a result, I would probably get about four hours of sleep a night, sometimes less, sometimes a little bit more. Um, But it was to the point where we would hang out on the weekends and I would literally fall asleep while everyone else was having a conversation. Yeah, absolutely. We go out to dinner with him, my, our wives together. We're sitting at the table. Jesse's just snoozing. He's ready mm-hmm. for the coffee at like 10 o'clock at night just to perk him back up. We would go to a movie, say. Mm-hmm. We'd have to load him up with caffeine if we thought he could make it through the movie. Oh, yeah. If we were having <laughs> mixed drinks, I think I, I, a couple times I would go for the vodka Red Bull. Um, <laughs> I don't think I ever told you this, but I actually fell asleep in your bathroom one time. <laughs> That's how bad it got. <laughs> I thought uh, it was comfortable for you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so I, I, I had a little bit of that going into it. Um, my wife, not as much. Um, she was used to more of a normal nine to five. She didn't have a long commute to worry about. Um, so she would usually sleep six to eight hours a night, and sometimes she would have trouble with insomnia. So it's not like she was a complete virgin when it came to sleep deprivation. But um, for her, it was a little bit more of a stark change. Mm -hmm. than it was for me. Um, But no matter what kind of experience you've had in the past, it is a little bit jarring um, to get that little sleep. And one thing that really will help you out, and it helped us both out, is taking some time off work if you can do it. Uh, I know that's not a reality for everybody. Some people you can't afford to. Some people your company doesn't have the right policy. But if you've got any chance to take time off, take as much as they will give you. Do not worry about what the other men will think about you. Oh, ha ha, look at you taking time <laughs> off. What are you, a mom? No, you're a dad. And you need to do that. Your, your wife needs you there. The kid needs you there. And if you can take the time off, you will be so glad that you did. Absolutely. You're never going to regret it. Um, I know some dads who just took their own time off, even if they didn't have company-sponsored time off. I know that sounds challenging, but you're not going to go on a big vacation the first year that your kid has been born anyway. I only had um, you know, two weeks off, and I took a third week off. I, what about you, Jesse? It was uh, it was roughly the same. We um, actually got kind of lucky in that the year that we found out that we were expecting my company uh, revealed a a parental leave policy, whether you nice. were the dad or the mom, that was, I believe it was 10 days fully paid. 
um, I already had enough uh, paid time off on reserve that I had saved up over the year that I could take an additional week and a half on top of that. So I was um, home with the family for the better part of a month, for the better part of November. And uh, even beyond the emotional benefits of that, being able to spend time with the newborn and all that, the bonding stuff, uh, on a practical level, it is really, really helpful when you are waking up every hour and a half, two hours, three hours to know that you don't then have to get up at 6 a.m. and get ready for work and hop in your car and head to the highway and then spend an hour on the highway or whatever your commute is. You don't have that added pressure if you know, okay, well, we'll just sleep when we can. And if that means waking up every two hours and then not getting our day started until 10 o'clock, so be it. Um, you're really going to be glad that you did that if you can take the time off. Uh, I would say if you can, absolutely 100% go for it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the best part is that it's the easiest way to kind of get in there and get really a crash course of understanding all that it takes to, you know, care for your kid. There's so much that you're going to learn and there's way too much to even think about before you go into it. So, you know, a lot of it you're going to pick up on the fly and what better time to do it than when you're getting drilled, you know, with practicing it two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, like every single night mm -hmm. to being able to learn about it. I mean, you have to think about all the things that the mom needs to be able to take care of the kid. So uh, let's say, uh, for example, that uh, the mother is breastfeeding. You've chosen to do that. Um, so you thinking, you know, guys, hey, you don't have to be involved in that. You know, success for you. No, not not quite the case. You know, try to get in there and, and help out. You know, the best thing you can do a lot of the times is just support the mom. Mm -hmm. Support the mom taking care of the kid. Uh, be the dad that's handy and has all the supplies. There's a lot of supplies. Make sure you've got things on hand. Make sure you've got water for mom to drink. Make sure you've got swaddles for the baby if they enjoy that to be comfortable. Make sure you've got the boppy. Talk about the boppy. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have that on hand so that the uh, your wife doesn't have to just carry the child and can uh, you know sit down and relax. You know, have all these things. And she's going to need stuff. Maybe the child will get wet and you'll need a diaper or things like that. So be the guy that has the supplies. Like There's a lot for you to be able to do. And I remember waking up, you know, all those times throughout the night and just I was the guy that was like running back and forth from, you know, the bedroom to the nursery. Like, where's the diapers? Where's the bag? Where are the wipes? Where's the bottle? Where's the water? All these different things. I mean, it was a it was a full time, you know, gig for me. I mean, was it pretty similar with you guys? Oh, yeah. And uh, one other thing that I was uh, mostly in charge of for a while was uh, tracking everything. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. What I suggest, and I, I think you guys may have done this too, is uh, the wonderful world of apps. Um, mm -hmm. There is an app that we use called Baby Daybook, and mm -hmm. uh, we've we've kind of um, weaned ourselves off of it now that uh, our kid is six months old, and you know he's kind of he's on more of a regular schedule. We don't have to worry about these things as much. Um, but we had an app that helped us track his diaper changes, whether they were wet or dirty, uh, breastfeeding, whether it was on the left or the right breast, bottle feeding, bathing. All the things that when your kid is a newborn, you are too sleep deprived to remember when is the last time you changed a diaper. And you also, if you're a first time parent like we have been, um, you're not exactly confident in, okay, am I changing him enough? Or are we breastfeeding him frequently enough? When is the next one coming up? So you've got that kind of on your mind as well. Um, get an app and as a dad, be the one to take charge there uh, because your wife is going to be actually the one getting her hands dirty. You know, in many of those cases, you want to be there to kind of coach her through it and keep track of everything and make sure that she doesn't have to put the mental energy into that kind of stuff since she's putting a lot of the physical energy into everything else. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the key, again, is to be the sane one in the relationship in this moment. Now, mm -hmm. both of you are not getting sleep if you guys are staying up with a kid at this point. Don't worry about that. It's not a competition, but mm -hmm. you know, Jesse's right. You know, your wife, um, in this case, or your partner is going to be taking care of the kid. Uh, let's say they're breastfeeding, like we've talked about, then they're doing a lot just with that. They're holding the kid, they're making sure the positions are, are correct, making sure that the latch is working. There's a lot that goes into that, by the way. Um, and there's a lot to, to go into just taking care of that side of things. So the dad needs to be the one who's got a little bit of mental capacity like Jesse's talking about, write down the poop times, write down if it's wet and dirty, write down like when you do the feeding. Uh, and really the best part about writing down all this stuff is that you get to take charge of that sleep schedule. So you can say, okay, my kid just woke up. It's 1.30. Yes, I get to sleep again until 4. Okay, that's when I have to wake up again. Mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes the kid's not going to wake up 
on a two hour time schedule, but you need to be the one making sure that they wake up. Exactly. This is really important to get the sleep schedule right for your kid. Now they may mm-hmm. come up, they may wake up and wail and, and you know make a lot of noise, but you really have to be on top of the wife and the baby making sure they stick to that schedule. Exactly, yeah. Uh, many times in the very beginning, I was the one setting the alarm saying, okay, it's been two and a half hours, however long the doctor told us we needed to, to breastfeed every you know so often. Um, the baby was sometimes asleep. He wasn't like screaming, getting ready. You know, I need the food now. But like we said last week, um, babies at that age don't understand what they need to do in order to stay alive. They're not going to say, oh, hey, uh, hey, guys, uh, looking at my watch. It's been about two hours. I think uh, maybe I should get some milk now. They don't know. And, you know, your wife's going to be, you know, p- probably asleep because she's as sleep deprived as you are. So, be that one to set the alarm, to get up, to kind of gently nudge everybody and say, okay, let's go ahead and do this now and then we can get back to sleep and stay on top of it. And, you know, it'll change too. Um, In the very beginning, you may wake up more frequently than you will later on. Mm-hmm. And even if you are not waking up according to that alarm clock, um, I don't know about you, Brandon, but I had a very hard time falling asleep and staying asleep in the first few weeks because I was a nervous wreck. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Every, I would say, for a while, every half hour, I was sort of waking myself up and craning my neck up to look over at the bassinet <laughs> to make sure the baby the was still, still breathing. There? Is he like there? I would, and then I would get up and kind of walk over, like tiptoe, so that if he was asleep, I wouldn't wake him up <laughs> because you'd never want to wake up a baby before Creaky you need floors. to. Oh boy, exactly. <laughs> um, but I couldn't sleep, and then after a few weeks, I was like, okay, I'm used to this. Okay, he's asleep. He'll stay asleep. He's not just gonna die randomly. I can give myself that few hours of sleep. And then as time will go on, like just know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Like you're not sleeping much now, but as time goes on, the baby will lose that dependence, that need to feed every three to four hours. Mm -hmm. And pretty much after a while, he'll sleep through the night. Uh, For the past couple of weeks, uh, David, my six month old, has been sleeping a full eight hours. You know, we can go to bed at 11 o'clock and he won't wake up until Lucky seven man. o'clock, sometimes even eight <laughs> o'clock the next morning. And I got to tell you, I mean, after you have gone six months without getting a full night's sleep, like <laughs> solid, you know, it feels so good. It feels like you're on vacation or something and you're just, you know, getting the spa treatment. It feels luxurious to get you're, a full night's sleep You're on like a again. sleep high almost. Exactly. Like, you don't even know what life you're living anymore. It's, it's amazing. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, uh, yeah, so going back to thinking about, okay, those first days, those first weeks, like what should you be thinking about in this sleep-deprived state? You know, we've talked about being there for the mom, being there for the kid, being on top of things, which is hard to do, uh, but, you know, that's a great role for dads to play. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, some of the the funnier things that end up happening, like you don't really think about it, like it's still hard to process all of the information you need, right? So one of the things you're doing most commonly uh, during the middle of the night is changing diapers. Mm-hmm. So think about uh, a pro tip here for those listening who have sons or, or are going to have boys. One of the things that sounds obvious but you're not going to think about is what I call the check the penis situation. So you've got to make sure every time you're changing that diaper that when you're putting it back on a clean one, you check that penis and you got to point it down. Yep. Very important because oh, it's yeah. going to want to be pointing up. Uh, it's going to, um, you know, not to get into too many details, but sometimes it will just be up. And you need to point that down because otherwise that is going to be leaking all over the place. Uh, You know, we've had examples of people, friends of ours, even ourselves, you know, before we kind of really thought about this and figured it out and had the aha moment where you would be like, how is my kid getting wet on like the upper armpit Mm -hmm. like area? How is that possible? Well, aha, it's because he's shooting it up, (laughs) shooting it up out of his diaper and Mm -hmm. going out that way. And the reason I mention this is because actually uh, my wife was uh, having to change all of the clothes for Noah on a really, really frequent basis. Like, and you just know that, yes, they pee a lot, but it can't be this much, right? So uh-huh. after three times in a row of changing his clothes from peeing all over them, we're like, what the heck? We have to do something here. So always important to check the penis. You're going to forget in the middle of the night when the sleep deprived state is kicking in, but uh, it's one of the most important things to be thinking about. So in the middle of the night, after you have changed the diaper, after the baby has been fed, uh, many times he or she will fall back asleep with no problem because they've got a full belly, they're clean, they don't have anything going on in their diaper that is upsetting them. Um, But when they don't go back to sleep, 
that is when you are going to be wanting to pull your hair out and your wife is going to be feeling <laughs> the exact same way. Um, and so here are some things that uh, that that helped us um, get the baby back to sleep, but also to keep our sanity. Um, my wife uh, came up with something, or maybe she saw it somewhere, that she started calling the miracle hold, where she'll hold the baby. Uh, he's kind of on his side. He's got his head sort of tucked in uh, around her, in between her arm and her torso, and she's kind of using her left arm to support him kind of in the crook of her arm, and uh, his arm's kind of tucked in as well, and then, you know, she's got her right arm supporting the um, the, the other side of him, and she kind of rocks him back and forth, and that having, just being close to her, kind of helped him to fall back asleep. When that wouldn't work, we would put him in uh, his rocker, and we would rock him back and forth, and sometimes that would help him fall asleep. And when that didn't work, uh, I would carry him sort of uh, on my shoulder and pace back and forth and mm-hmm. rock and bounce mm-hmm. him and sing to him until he fell asleep. And don't feel like a bad parent if this process takes hours. Um, mm-hmm, absolutely. That is So that's the hard part that you're not thinking about going into it is that not only are you going to be waking up every couple of hours, but when you do, Sometimes it's just 15 minutes and then you're back asleep. Sometimes mm-hmm. you are up for a solid hour or two or more before that baby will go back to sleep and allow you to go back to sleep. Um, and sometimes he'll be fussy. Sometimes he won't. Um, I had many instances where he was fine. He wasn't upset. He just would not fall back asleep. So we would just find ways to entertain ourselves you know, as we were waiting. Um, I mean... Uh, I would find my favorite shows and, mm-hmm. you know, I wouldn't want to go into the living room and turn on the TV because that's even more stimulus for him. Um, so I would get apps. So you can get the Netflix app on your phone. You can get, if you're a Showtime subscriber, you could get the Showtime app on your phone. I did mm-hmm. that because I was a huge Twin Peaks fan when my kid was, uh, you know, in that infancy stage. And I finished out the season that I was watching, you know, on my phone every evening, you know, 15 minutes at a time. And that's that's something else uh, on a totally different subject. You kind of get used to not digesting the things that you used to do in solid blocks. You may not get a full hour to yourself to watch a TV show. You may have to watch it for 10 minutes and then come back to it a week later and watch another 10 minutes. I mean, it has taken, you know, it's taken us uh, twice as long as it used to to get through like a season of Superstore or something like that. <laughs> uh, just because, I mean, you've got a baby there. Like you, yeah. you, you have to accept the fact that, your free time isn't really as free as it used to be. For sure. It's going to feel like equal parts that you have tons of time mm-hmm. and you have none whatsoever. So yeah. it, re- it really resonates with me as well because I remember like all we would do, it seemed like, for those first couple of weeks was just watch Netflix. Yeah. We just, there's nothing else you can really do. You're not going out too much. Um, so you're just watching tons of Netflix, but you're not also making a lot of progress <laughs> with binging uh, because you might make it through like 20 minutes before something happens and you have to go deal with it. Like I've never paused so many things for so oh, yeah. long um, and had so many moments where like uh, Netflix goes to the pause screen and like you're getting away from it or like your TV just shuts off and goes into like low power mode yeah. <laughs> from just like inactivity. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, all, I've never watched more and less Netflix at the same time yeah. in equal amounts. I feel like it's kind of really weird in that way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and, and one of the weird things, I'll just a quick Netflix tangent, like you're going to want material to watch, right? So I don't know about everybody else, but for some reason I enjoy now watching like family based things on Netflix. Um, so like a, th- a show that we've gotten into that's already happened and is over is Parenthood. Uh, which just seemed to make sense, uh, and we like really enjoy it. Um, but we found this new show called The Letdown, which, great pun, uh, if for those of you who are parents, you probably know what that's about. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really a bit interesting because it both makes you feel like you're laughing at yourselves, but then it's also a little too real at times. Like It gets a little real with the stereotypes because they're stereotypes for a reason. Uh, and you start thinking like, oh my God, this is exactly what's going to happen to me tonight when they're like showing a scene where the kid's crying uncontrollably. You're laughing, but then like dying a little inside because you're <laughs> just hoping it's not you. Uh, and one of the funniest things, like talking about sleep deprivation that happened in like the first episode that just got uh, a bit too real is, uh, you know, they the main characters have just had a kid and um, the new dad is talking to some coworkers. And one of the coworkers is saying, 
what you really need to do is tell your wife to definitely breastfeed. You really got to encourage her to breastfeed because, no, it's not good for the child. You have to encourage her to breastfeed because it's great for you, the dad. It means that you don't have to wake up in the middle of the night and do the bottle feeding. Um, and, you know, you're just sitting there listening to that, and you're like, ha, ha, ha. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Uh, we're here to help encourage you to, to actually kick in and be supportive uh, as a dad. You know, we talked a lot about how great it can be while also being tough at night. Uh, so that's when the show gets a little too real. So that's the moment when you're like, okay, I need to turn that off mm-hmm. <laughs> and watch uh, the Great British Baking Show instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we uh, we went through some Netflix shows. Um, we are, right now we're watching, uh, I don't know if you guys have watched Lost in Space at all, the new version. I don't know, I haven't kicked into it yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, my wife, Ashley, she's more into it than I am. Um, mm-hmm. But it's a, it's a good, solid show. And um, we're still in that, phase where the kid is not going to be scarred if you are watching something with PG-13 or mm, R-rated right, language. Right, yeah. um, and my advice to you is enjoy that while you can. <laughs> uh, yep. Because soon he is going to be picking up stuff, he or she is going to be picking up words, and you don't want to be like watching those raunchy comedies at an age mm-hmm. where he can pick something up and then go say it in front of your parents. Yeah. Um, you know, we uh, we watched uh, an animated Netflix show called Big Mouth that was, it's absolutely hysterical. I mean, we are crying laughing, but it is so R-rated. Um, it is so graphic. It's about, like, kids going through puberty and stuff, but, it like, it doesn't hold anything back. Like, it's it's, like, super bad, but animated. Oh my god! Um, and we're we're watching that while we can because I know that six months from now, well, maybe not six months from now, but maybe a year from now, um, when he's picking up stuff and learning to repeat sounds, mm-hmm. I don't want him dropping an f bomb, you know, in front of his grandparents. <laughs> um, so so we're getting all the all of that out of our system right now. Yeah, you gotta try. And even with these like wholesome shows, there's gonna be that scene where like two kids are making out or like the sex like conversation comes up or something and. Or it just gets really loud, like the, the the funny thing to me, which I get, but uh, you know, if my wife is like holding our son and like we're watching a show and it like it's super dramatic and people are shouting at each other, she's like covering the ears of our child to like prevent him from like being mm-hmm. exposed to this intense, like dramatic, like anger. Like you don't want the negative energy in the space yeah. or or if there's like uh, you know, really like a graphic scene all of a sudden you're like, Ah, you know, gonna <laughs> hide the baby over to the side and you're like, Oh, it's hilarious. Oh wait, yeah, my child, oh no, what are they yeah. thinking? What are they picking up? <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and at that age, like up until they're a year old, honestly, they're not going to pick it up. Yeah. You don't, you really do not feel guilty if you're watching something that is not appropriate for children and your kid cannot speak yet and really like can't see that far in front of him. And, you mm-hmm. know, it's, it's just learning finally what faces are and learning to distinguish like shapes in the distance and dis- and to distinguish motion and movement and all that kind of stuff. Um, You're fine. You're good for a while. Yeah. Yeah, but be thinking about it in the long term. So yeah, get get all your Silicon Valley out while you can. Like have we're fun doing with that right that. now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Same deal. So, sleep deprivation is not just something that is going to affect you guys at night. Uh, in the daytime too, if you're running on four hours of sleep, that's going to have an effect on your body and on your mental processes and on your wife's uh, especially. Um, So, you know, even just aside from in the middle of the night, taking care of her and taking care of the the tracking and the diaper changes and making sure that you've got all the supplies there, uh, there are things you can do in the morning, you know, and in the daytime to to give her the support she needs as well. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, really be thinking about uh, different ways you can kind of be helpful for uh, your wife and the new mom, right? So you can't be as involved if, you know, she's breastfeeding or something overnight. So, you know, you got to kind of find out a way to give her that time back. Uh, if you can. So especially, you know, a great thing to do is say um, if the baby's staying up uh, late at night, it can't go to sleep. Uh, it's pushing like 11, 12, something like that. Dad, you can stay up with the baby. Mom can go to sleep. Uh, on time, quote unquote, or early, uh, nothing really feels like there's any time to it anymore at this mm-hmm. point. But um, that's a great opportunity to get a little time with your kid. Uh, you know, you stay up with them, you know, get a little more bonding time. Uh, it's probably after the nighttime feeding uh, before they're going to wake up again. So let mom get a chance to sleep in. Um, and then another great 
opportunity is on the weekends, uh, especially if you've already gone back to work, so you're not just sleeping through all nights and days anymore. Um, say Saturday morning, a great opportunity if your kid is waking up at 6, 7 in the morning, you, dad, can take that first uh, crack at it in the morning. You can take that first morning shift, let mom sleep in until 9 or 10. Um, as my wife uh, has put it, it gives her life. Like You don't think it really makes a big difference, but it does. If mom can sleep in just for two more hours, it will make a huge difference for her. Um, so, you know, thinking about different ways to kind of like share the load, uh, in the relationship and you can really help yourself by thinking about, um, you got to kind of plan your day a little bit. Like in the early days, you're not going to really have much of a plan to it, but find the moment and make sure that you take a nap. Mm -hmm. Like this is really super critical. Like if I'm going to, you know, we like to give some tips on the show. That's really what we want to do is, you know, help parents, not just dads, like figure their way out through this mess. Um, but naps are so critical. Like you hear it, you think it's obvious, but don't forget about it. Like the difference of when you've had a nap for a day and when you haven't is so different. Oh yeah. Uh, especially, you know, um, for your spouses and your partners, like thinking about, you know, their well being. like you need to get that in. Mm -hmm. So you, one of the problems like that was a challenge for us, um, is you still think that you want to be awake yeah. during the daylight hours. Right. Does this happen to you mm -hmm. guys where you're thinking like, OK, even if you've gotten one or two hours of sleep, you know, it's it's, um, you know, 11 a.m., you know, 2 p.m. Like it's the middle of the day and you're thinking, oh, I'm, I can do stuff. You know, I can go out. I want to, you know, have fun. I want to watch TV. I want to, you know, get things done. You can. But you got to remember to, you know, that self-care. you got to remember to take naps. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, like we've said earlier in the episode, do that while you can, while you've got time off, if you're able to take time off. And uh, then once you have to go back to work, like figure out ways to make it work. Um, I remember in the first few weeks uh, that I was going back to work, um, my kid was still waking up every few hours to feed. And I was such a zombie during the daytime, uh, you know, getting four hours of sleep a night that my wife was afraid to let me drive uh, because mm -hmm. I have an hour and a half commute to get from where I live to work and back oh, yeah. every day. Yeah, yeah. So. For a while, she quarantined me at night in another bedroom. I would sleep in the guest bedroom, and uh, I would get a full night's sleep, and she would be handling the diaper changes and the feeding in the middle of the night. And that was very, very helpful. Uh, it wasn't a long-term thing. It wasn't a permanent thing. And in fact, it lasted a little while, and then she got to the point where she's like, okay, he's waking up too much, and I cannot handle this all on my own. Please come back so mm -hmm. we just adjusted and i increased my caffeine intake and <laughs> uh you know and and make sure that you're you're eating right throughout the day to yeah. you know eat stuff that gives you energy don't eat stuff that is going to slow you down and make you sleepier uh you do not need to help yourself get sleepier during the daytime because you're not going to be getting much sleep mm -hmm. yeah that's really important to be thinking about you know everyone like the great thing you can do as a dad again is to be thinking about not just yourself and your own care but the mom, you know, your your partner and the the baby, like the baby's going to sleep a lot more just naturally. They're going to go in and out sleeping time, wake time. But it's such a big difference. Uh, dads, you'll you'll understand this. Like if you're coming home to a mom who has not napped, uh -huh. it's a big difference. Yeah. Um, so don't just avoid that situation if you can. And the easiest way to do it is to remind your, your partner to take those naps. Mm -hmm. And they say like sleep if the kid is sleeping. Uh, they sleep a lot early on, so you're not going to do it all the time, but definitely take advantage of like a morning nap, an afternoon nap. Uh, one of the challenges is like for us, we have construction going on around us uh. pretty regularly and specifically next door. So it's been pretty challenging to always get a nap because our bedroom is right next to that house that they're doing the construction on. So, you know, you go into the bedroom, you try to relax, you try to lay down and then chainsaws going and uh you know hammering and things like that mm -hmm. and uh but just remember that as long as you're you know the kid is like asleep and you're laying down you know you're kind of unplugged you're not watching tv you're not on your phone if you just kind of chill and relax you know close your eyes as long as you're doing that you actually are getting a lot of benefit uh, you know i'm not like a sleep psychologist but i think you get something like 50 60 percent of the benefit of sleeping even if you're just relaxing and chilling with no stimulation. So just keep that in mind, folks. Like, be be aware. You know, if you can't get a nap in, don't struggle with it. Don't stress about it. But just kind of try to just calm yourself down for a bit. So something interesting that has happened to us is that 
uh, in those really early couple of days when you're dealing with the sleep deprivation, you're getting up every couple of hours without fail every single night and all throughout uh, the first couple of weeks, is that I really remembered my dreams a lot. So a lot of the times, you know, you think about like Inception style where you kind of maybe remember the dream, but you certainly don't remember it probably every day. Mm -hmm. At least I never did. But in this early couple of days with so much sleep deprivation and you're always waking up like every hour or two hours, I was always like right in the middle of a dream. And so I was always remembering the crazy dreams that I would have. And Austin and I, the kind of fun thing to do was like almost swap dream stories, which felt really weird because we both never really remembered them. Uh Um, And, you know, it gets so bad and like the crazy kind of things that you dream about are really weird um, because you're having a baby. So now all of a sudden you have these weird other things you're thinking of. And uh, my wife had a hilarious uh, story where, you know, she was so sleep deprived, always dealing with waking up to change the baby and things that she had this crazy dream that he was peeing so much that she had decided to like stick a catheter in him to like catch the pee <laughs> so that she God. didn't have to change him anymore <laughs> because he's just peeing too much. And I was like, poor, poor us. I'm like, yeah, that'd be so amazing if we could just do that <laughs> instead of a diaper. Um, so crazy dreams just kept coming up um, and I just remember them all the time. So, uh, you know, I know we're talking about sleep deprivation today, but in general, um, the the first few months that you've had the kid, you're going to learn some things on your own, and it also helps to take some tips from some guys who have been there. Um, so, Brandon, in the immediate aftermath of bringing that kid home from the hospital and for those, uh, for the first couple of months in your case, um, what have you guys learned that has kept you going? So uh, the big takeaways, you know, from my perspective is probably just thinking about the self-care that's really important. We talked about naps. We talked about being there for your wife, giving her some of the relief in the late nights or early mornings. Those are absolutely critical, like happy wife, happy life, but like happy family, (laughs) happy life almost. You've got to be looking out for uh, your partner and for your kid or kids. Um, You know, the things that really that I didn't really think about, but are like really important along the way, I think one of the more important ones that I would would highlight for everybody is like, make sure that um, the mom is staying hydrated. Yeah, Uh, it's something you don't really think about. um, But, you know, uh, in order for the milk production, if they're breastfeeding, especially, you really want to help stimulate that and kind of keep that up, you know, your kids going to need more and more over time. Um, so you really want to promote that. And one of the best ways to do that is to be hydrated. It's like if you're getting, if you're taking care of yourself and staying hydrated and drinking water is going to really help with the milk production, which is going to make breastfeeding uh, go a lot better. So really make sure, again, dads, that you're staying on top of your partner, making sure that you're bringing them water, giving them a big cup and refilling it for them all the time. You know, anytime you think about it, say, hey, have you had some water or have them drink some water? So drinking water is really, really important, really, really critical. And, you know, if you're someone like me, like my wife did not drink water. She does not really like to have it on hand or drink it. She didn't do it. I love drinking water, but again, I'm not breastfeeding. I can't help with that. So be there for them, dads. Uh, Be there with a cup of water at the ready all times. Oh, yeah. Um, And so here's one thing that we have learned, and this is for moms too. Um, Go easy on yourselves. Uh, There are going to be times where you are not going to get it right. You're going to do something wrong. There are going to be some times where you're going to make some big lifestyle changes and you were going to have to settle for things that you did not used to have to settle for. And you're going to feel like your life has just changed so much. And in many ways, you're going to feel like you are not up to par and you are not up to the standards that you used to be up to. Go easy on yourselves. Dads, um, this is this is kind of weird, but your weight may fluctuate. You know, you may be you may lose weight because you're forgetting to eat or you may gain weight because you're eating a lot of junk food and comfort food. Um, One thing that happened for us is uh, after the baby came, we decided that we were going to go on uh, what is called a time restricted diet where you don't really change the way you eat, but you change when you eat so that you change. You eat a a good breakfast around eight. You get your lunch in and kind of a dinner ish and then you stop eating around between two and four o'clock. And the science behind that is it gives you the rest of the evening to digest. Overnight, your uh, body is burning fat, and then you're ready in the morning. And Because the, the, the reverse to that is when you eat dinner late at night, your body is having to work all night to digest that food. It's not really getting around to burning fat. Um, it, is, it works great. It's just not great for a mother who is breastfeeding because she's already burning calories. Uh, you don't 
think about this, but your wife is burning calories when she's breastfeeding. She's getting exercise. Yeah, that's a great tip because I think, uh, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that like the act of breastfeeding consumes like a thousand calories. It's something crazy a day, like that. Yeah. I think, um, and that's like half of your daily recommended calories. So you managed to diet right after having a kid. I can't really believe that because we did not at all. We did not do anything good for our bodies or with what we were eating food-wise. We just ate anything that was in front of us. Uh, I mean, you've probably heard of like meal trains that you get where people will like bring you food right after you've had a kid because they think you can't you know, have time to cook. And it's true. You cannot. It's very difficult. So people were just bringing us takeout. They're bringing us, um, you know, fast food. Even when they were bringing us a lot of home cooked meals, you know, it was like good meaty stuff, like, you know, roast beef, macaroni and cheese. So we have been gaining baby weight along with Mm -hmm. our son, I think. So kudos to you guys for trying that, but we have not done a good job at all. Well, uh, let me be completely open and transparent about this. Uh, I say we diet and we dieted we didn't stick to it. Like we started <laughs> okay. out with an ideal and we achieved it maybe four days out of seven of the Ooh. week, hey, you there know, you go. and then the rest of the time we would, you know, y- you get home and you're like, oh, I'm so tired. And my wife's like, I'm so hungry. There's no food in the house because we finally run out of mm-hmm. all the food that folks uh, like you guys have yeah. given to us after we had the baby. Oh, you're welcome. I have got <laughs> to get something to eat. And I'm like, you know what? I've got to get something to eat. Mm-hmm. So let's go get some Chick-fil-A or some, you know, some euros or, um, you know, some, Chinese food or something like that. And, uh, you know, most often those nights would also end with a bowl of ice cream. Mm, um, because so <laughs> what we kind of figured out was, you know, you got to you gotta try and take care of your body, but you're also really stressed out all the time. And if it helps to have a little something sweet, just go for it. Yeah, a little nice food, a little glass of wine, people, uh, goes a long way to helping mm. that stress. Yep. And, you know, by that same token, like, don't feel bad and then don't let other people make you feel bad, too, because the way you raise your kid is going to be different from the way everyone else raises their kid, especially when it's generational differences. Um, Mm -hmm. Your parents and your grandparents and your aunts and uncles and your cousins are all going to tell you things. And in most cases, they're going to respect boundaries. They're going to know, okay, I'm going to throw some advice over, but I'm not going to micromanage. I'm not going to overstep my bounds. I'm not going to step in and judge you. But every once in a while, you will get that relative that says, why are you doing it that way? We never did it that way. And my kid turned out just fine. Okay, that's true. But also, you know, now we live in the modern world. We have medicine we didn't have back then. And infant mortality rates down. And kids are generally healthier than they used to be. And it's for a reason. It's because we've learned different things over time. Mm -hmm. So don't let people, like, freak you out you know, and make you think that you're doing something wrong or that you're overthinking something or that you're being too careful or that you're not being careful enough. Um, trust your instincts. Trust what you've learned. You know, listen to your doctors. Listen to each other. Um, and, yeah, just don't let people guilt you into stuff. I um, We had uh, some, some folks that we know um, when my wife made the decision to breastfeed, and they were older, uh, they were part of an older generation, say to her, you – you're you're breastfeeding we never did that (laughs) you know that was it it, and it had it kind of a uh the implication was we're you're too good to breastfeed that's for poor people you know that's for people that can't afford formula and that kind of stuff because in that generation the generation that those people came from there was a stigma against breastfeeding it was seen as low Mm -hmm. class Mm -hmm. and so that person didn't breastfeed that person's mother didn't breastfeed they did infant formula because back then that was like doctors would tell you this is the healthiest way to take care of your baby. This has things that uh, your breast milk doesn't have. But now that pendulum has swung back in the other direction and doctors are saying, if you can, if you can't, it's fine. Your baby's going to be just fine. But if you can breastfeed, that is the best thing for your kid. Yeah, really good point because, I mean, the judgment is is ever present with just about every decision you're going to yeah. make for probably the rest of your kid's life while mm-hmm. you're being a parent, not just the first couple of days. But yeah, I mean, think about... Uh, a lot of those things, you know, uh, situations are completely different, uh, different time, different way of thinking about things back then. I mean, something that you probably don't even think about. I do advertising, so I kind of think about these things a little bit. Um, back 
uh, in the you know early 1900s or whatever it was, like when formula was like say first invented, um, imagine like what it was like to hear about that, like oh this magical thing that can help moms, and it was probably you know marketed in this way to really like get people to start doing it, and then all your friends are doing it, everyone in the community's doing it. There's so much pressure. Like of course you know uh, your parents or or some other people you know who are maybe older in that older generation might have just done that. That was just the natural thing to do. Mm-hmm. So you know letting people know you know what your preferences are is really important. You know be up front with your family and your friends like okay this is how we want to approach this we've decided we want to breastfeed like you know the important thing uh you know kind of what we're getting at here is you know take in the advice that people have for you but then it's your decision like, exactly it's really important to remember that yeah yeah every time someone says to us you know oh in my day our doctors told us not to breastfeed i want to say back to them yeah but in your day doctors also told women to smoke cigarettes to lose weight so mm-hmm. or uh, you know, leeches to draw blood yeah like right. what, what time are we living in yeah so yeah think about the information that you're getting you know take it with a grain of salt you know you are going to make your decisions and you know not to scare people but there are a lot of decisions you're going to make every day Mm -hmm. so every single one of them is is not a life or death thing like you know feel it out experience it you're going to get the hang of it Uh, especially because you're going to be staying up a lot so you're going to be making a lot more decisions in your day (laughs) so you're going to have a lot of time to to figure it out Mm -hmm. so uh we fielded stories for this week's show um about sleep deprivation related to the crazy things that we do when we don't get sleep and just the way that uh the nightlife when it comes to raising a kid and uh, the first one I'm going to share actually came to me from my parents. Uh, my mom tells me that when I was an infant, uh, I would not uh, fall back asleep at night. I wouldn't fuss. I wouldn't cry. In fact, even when I would wake them up to tell them I was hungry, it was more of a whimper. Of like, eh, eh, hey, you know, uh, I, I wouldn't cry, <laughs> which like looking back, I'm like, man, I was a good kid because uh, it could go so much <laughs> or worse. Or your parents were sitting there being like, why does he keep saying eh? Eh, yeah. all the time like get up or don't get up that's, <laughs> that's what i do with my son sometimes yeah, i'm like, like make it, up your mind buddy <laughs> yeah do it or don't um but my mom because i wouldn't fall back asleep she would just stay up with me so at one o'clock in the morning from like 1 a.m to 5 a.m i would just be up alert looking around so my mom would uh she would just get well acquainted with whatever was on tv at that time of night which back then was like i love lucy on nick at night or tv land or stuff we would just watch all those old sitcoms and just sit there for hours together, just, you know, me and her and dad and, and all that stuff. And, you know, looking back, that's probably why I love old TV shows now. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we've talked a lot about like the, the generation before ours, our parents' generation, older generations, like, you know, we've made fun of it a little bit and, you know, kind of poked fun at it. Uh, but really, uh, you know, it's it's different for everyone and it's still that unique, wonderful experience, like thinking about sleep deprivation, sleep schedules, like paternity leave didn't used to exist back in the day. It still barely exists now. Uh, you know, hopefully people are progressing and moving forward with it. But, you know, I remember uh, my dad like being so proud to talk to me about the fact that when, you know, my brother and I were born, you know, he took off like a month or, or two months of time from work, like unpaid, but he wanted to be with us. Mm-hmm. You know, he wanted to get in that bonding time. And I just thought that was really awesome that he decided, um, you know, that even though he wasn't getting compensated for it, paternity leave didn't exist, that he just wanted to spend that time with us. Um, so, you know, take, uh, take everything with a grain of salt, you know, things have changed a lot for sure in how you can take care of your kids. But at the same time, you know, our parents still really want to be there for us. Jesse's parents obviously wanted to stay up late at night with him and watch I Love Lucy reruns. Yeah. Um, so, you know, always, always cherish your parents. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And my parents didn't have, uh, the option, neither of them. Uh, my mom worked for a family business and had a very important job at the restaurant that, uh, that she worked for, for her dad. Uh, and my dad ran his own business with a business partner. Neither of them really had the option to take much time off. So what my mom would do, luckily it was a family business. I was basically raised in the kitchen mm-hmm. of that restaurant. Um, my granddad would have an office in the back, and she sat, uh, and she set up a sort of a, a day bed for me. You know, the uh, the playpen and the bassinet and and all that stuff rolled into one. And she would just she would keep me there during the day. And then at a certain point, my grandmother would take me home with her uh, because my grandmother worked at the restaurant, too. My grandmother was like the 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 head manager. My granddad was the the owner. You know, my mom ran the front. Um, and then after a while, my dad worked in the back. So everyone worked there. Um, but they didn't really have the option to to take time off. So what they did was they just they integrated me into their lives in mm-hmm. a way that made sense, that was safe and that kept me with them so they didn't miss out on that quality time. So, you know, that, and that's something also, um, you may not have the option to take time off, but if you can't 
do what you can to squeeze in that quality time wherever you can get it. You know, if it's in the afternoon, if it means like pulling all nighter so that you can spend time, you know, face to face with your kid, even though you're not there during the day, like just do it. Just do what you can. Take care of yourself. Take care of that kid. Uh, don't miss out on this time because it's a cliche, but really it is time that you will never get back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so thinking about some other stories, um, we got a comment from a coworker of mine. Shout out to uh, my friend Joey. Um, so he is likewise a new dad. He's about uh, two, three months in with his uh, with his son. So talking about uh, the sleep schedules, the sleep deprivation, like what were challenges for him. Um, so some real talk here. He was telling us that uh, basically after not very long, his wife told him that he could not be on nighttime duty anymore. He could not get up with her and help with his son because he was so grumpy. He's one of these people that, like, when he's awake from a dead sleep, he will let you know about it. He's not happy. So his wife would joke that he was the big baby in the room, and she already had a little baby to take care of. So he could not be involved in that situation. So um, it sounds tough, you know, for the mom to deal with that. But, you know, the way that they got around it is that he then shifts that focus, um, and he knows that she likewise will have challenges like being up overnight or being at home with the kid. And so he is there to take care of her. So, again, going back to some of the things we've talked about, you know, my, my friend here is basically saying that, like, okay, he's not the best at nighttime care. You know, own that, realize that. So what do you do? You focus on taking care of your wife. So he is great at caring for her, and then she is good at caring for the child. So you're still getting that in, um, and I think that's a really great tip. So shout out to Joey. Oh, yeah. Uh, so this next story comes from my wife's cousin, Kenny, and this is, a, uh, this is an afterbirth story, but it's still a great one. Uh, Amy, his wife, and I showed up sleep deprived to Tova's, his daughter, uh, Tova's first baby doctor appointment with no diaper bag. And of course, stripping her down to put her on the scales revealed that we desperately needed it. Mm -hmm. And then there's a poo emoji. <laughs> Perfect. It was the first of many embarrassing parenting moments. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that is a true fact. Parenting is messy. Same. Thing. Um, yeah. the delivery is messy. The pregnancy is messy. Everything after the birth is messy. Um, Take it from a former germaphobe who had to get over that mess really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, I totally feel you on that one, Kenny, because first baby appointment, brought the diaper bag, left diaper bag in car, went into the pediatrician, had to go back out, get diaper bag, bring diaper bag. Finally, when we get in there, he's mm -hmm. pooped. We have to change it. Guess what's not on the diaper bag? Diapers. Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. But we had the bag. <laughs> Um, I got a uh, a pretty a funny story from a buddy of mine, Paul Kim, that I've known for years. Uh, Paul is a first-time dad like us. He's got a two-and-a-half-year-old named Arlene. Uh, I'm actually going to try and bring him on the podcast one day because he's got a lot of great stories, and his daughter is just the most adorable thing. Um, but uh, Paul says, so I used to pat Arlene when she would sleep, like a rhythmic pat on her chest that helped her sleep. Um, I was so sleep-deprived that often... When I was uh, patting her, I would fall asleep, and I would continue to pat, but I would be patting the pillow instead of her. I would miss <laughs> because I was asleep, <laughs> and when I would wake up, I would just see that I was patting the pillow, and I would freak out because I thought I lost the baby, but the baby's in my arms. I just don't notice because I'm looking at the pillow that I'm patting, and uh, so here's something. You know, I said earlier there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, maybe not always. Um Paul's daughter is now two and a half years old, as I said, and these kinds of shenanigans are still happening. Sleep deprivation is still real. Um, recently, uh, he was in Chattanooga with the family, with his wife and daughter. Um, he was holding the baby. His wife was pushing the stroller. Um, he looks into the stroller as he's holding the toddler and sees that the toddler is not in the stroller. He doesn't put two and two together. He shouts, where's Arlene? <laughs> His wife says, are you serious? And he thinks, is, is she mad? At, wait, where, where's the kid? Is the kid missing? Is she upset with me because the daughter's missing? Did I lose her? Then he looks down and sees that the, the kid is in her arms. Um, and that's something that we can all relate to. If you haven't been there yet, you will get there before long. Just wait for it to happen. Um... Man, sleep deprivation does things to you. It you you sort of you become a little bit dumber, and that can also <laughs> a be bit. yeah yeah, and that yeah. can kind of cause some frustration between parents, young parents. You know, you used to be 
sharp and you used to be able to answer each other's questions and take care of each other's needs. Um, but when you're running on like three hours of sleep, you're going to be slow. You're not going to understand the words that your wife is saying to you sometimes. And you're going to be like, uh, what, what did you say? And, and, and vice versa <laughs> too. Um, you know, my wife has been so sleep deprived that she will ask me for baby wipes when she means diapers. Mm-hmm. And I will hand her wipes and she will say, no, the wipes, the wipe. I need the wipe. Give me the wipe. They're in the wipe. I need the wipe. And I was, I'm giving you wipes. And she says, no, what? Oh, diapers. You're going to forget words. Your wife's oh, going to forget words. Um, you are going to lose the grasp that you think you have on the English language. It'll come back to you. I, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm saying that being optimistic. I don't know for sure. Yeah. Um, but forgive yourself. Forgive your spouse. Be patient with each other. The old saying, don't be quick to anger. Give give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, if they say something to you that seems, you know, oh, did she just snap at me? What What's going on? Is she mad at me? Does she not love me anymore? No, she's probably just sleep deprived. You guys mm-hmm. are going to be short with each other. You're going to lose patience. That's okay. You know, take a step back, say, okay, we're probably distressed right now because we haven't slept. So why don't we take a step back? change the subject for a while, relax, take a breath. You're okay. Your marriage is not on the rocks because you have snapped at each other once in a, in a bout of sleep deprivation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Communication is key. I mean, uh, in marriage, not just <laughs> taking care of a, a kid together and being parents, uh, just talk to each other. That's, that's some of the best feedback. Like say what you're thinking about, like, how's it going? How's this, how's the parenting going? Are we doing okay? Are you bothered by like a lack of sleep? Like being able to talk about it is the most important. So you can make sure that you're getting enough sleep, make sure that you guys are budgeting for, you know, naps in the middle of your day, you know, like reminding your, your partner that, um, you know, you need time to do that or, um, that she should have the time to take a shower um, and that you guys feel like trade off. Like one of the things that we do for each other every night um, to help that has nothing to do with sleeping is just making sure that the you know we each get like thirty minutes to take a shower. Um, and really, it's not even just about the the shower and enjoying that, but just getting the time kind of like away and like sequestered from everyone, where you know you can't really hear the crying or anything. Like one of you is in charge, and the other one kind of gets to take a break for a minute. Um, like little things make a huge difference. So, you know, talk to each other, just keep, keep the communication open. I mean, that's really the most important thing. Absolutely. So that about does it for today. Uh, once again, this has been dad explaining May 7th, 2018 episode two of the podcast. I have been Jesse and I'm Brandon. Hey, if you like what you're listening, be sure to subscribe to us wherever you find your podcast needs. Also, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. Or if you'd like to go old school, drop us an email. You can find us at dadsplainingpodcast at gmail.com. Hey, Brandon, I got a joke for you. Why do chicken coops only have two doors? Why? Because if they had four, they'd be chicken sedans. So bad. (laughs) Thanks for listening. (laughs) 